Nobel, Nobel, he's the team. We're, we're appealing it. Oh, I'm sorry. We are we're appealing the, the, the decision to hold him without bail. When's the next court appearance? Tomorrow at 3.30. 3.30, same place. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. Uh, he came to New York to establish his innocence. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government said in their presentation today that changes anyone's mind about anything. He's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name, and he's going to clear his name. You already know uh, what it is. It's your boy, Laid Back, with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. Bah. It's your boy, Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another TikTok reaction. This is about Diddy. Now, Diddy done got locked up. This is all new. I don't know the charges. All I know is this is going to be a long video, man. So you might want to get your popcorn. You might want to buckle up. Also, I got a TikTok playlist. You know what I mean? If you into this stuff, you can go ahead and binge watch it. But if you make it to the end of this one, you a real one for real. That's all I'm going to say. Let's buckle up and let's see what they talking about. I heard they was talking about a thousand bottles. of. Let's just go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. And I'm the U.S. Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment mm. charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation. Do your own research. Do your own research. And for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Mm. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, mm. forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Damn. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people before we even go any further do y'all think he gonna be guilty or not guilty put that in the comments guilty or not guilty and is he gonna be the only one in the comments let's go for years and in a variety of ways as alleged combs used force threats of force and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak offs. Mm. And he often electronically recorded them. The freak offs sometimes lasted days at a time, Damn. involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. What? On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked dragged and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the mm. victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims and the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways 
including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, mm. kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. He was a... <laughs> now, Combs did not do this all on his own. Right. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, mm. security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, mm. including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. Baby oil. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak offs, and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. Mm. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened, and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. Mm. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s, and the large capacity drum magazine. Damn. They also seized evidence of the freak offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak offs with multiple victims. Whoa, this is sticky. This is sticky right here. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak offs more than 1,000 bottles altogether. Cases. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. They bought the shows? As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Mm -mm. Now I wanna be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. Uh -oh. No one should doubt our commitment on that. Uh oh. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Ooh. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Mm. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call one. 877 4 HSI tip. 
I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. Mm. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SCNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I want to thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SCNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner, and their supervisors, Jamie Backleapter and Jacqueline Kelly. They are members of the Civil Rights Unit in our criminal division. We created the Civil Rights Unit when I became U.S. Attorney. I am deeply proud of their work on this and so many other cases. I'll now take some questions. Oh, she takes Eric Katursky, ABC. Thanks, Nick. Damien, thanks. The indictment describes uh, aggressive, open, violent, hedonistic, abuse that you say was recurrent and widely known. Why did it take law enforcement wow. so long to intervene? How many women were victimized by Sean Combs and how many others were involved? Wow. Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today. Um, and we are committed to making sure that justice is done. Next question. Thank you. Julia Ainsley, NBC. Thank you for doing this. You said we are not done and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. He not playing. Janet Fisher, Newsday. He not playing. What's the difference between the uh, sex trafficking and uh, promoting travel for the uh, purpose of prostitution? Well, there are different crimes with different elements. I don't um, think we should get into the, the nitty gritty of the legal discussion right now, but um, the, the, the sex trafficking, we believe, they're all serious offenses, but the sex trafficking um, uh, conduct um, carries some significant penalties, and, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. Is one more coercive than the other? I'm not going to be able to get into that, but but you can look it up and 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 yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is is a very serious crime and it carries significant penalties. Good afternoon, Darla Miles, ABC Seven, New York. Thank you for this press conference and for the details. Two questions: um, in context of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims? It's mentioned plural in the indictment, but can you specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment? And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number Dang. of victims, um, you are correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. Um, uh, the details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, uh, um, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points, um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Next question. Julianne Papa. Hi, good morning from 1010 Winds. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences? And did he have locations where he kept them? And did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in LA, Miami. Why in New York? Mm, well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the US attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it. Um, the Southern District of New York can do it. And so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from, it's something that we embrace and we will continue to do that. 
Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Um, that was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand? Or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms Whoa. of the elements? Thanks. R. Kelly. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found amongst his residence? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place. I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of, um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, uh, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three defaced AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, mm -hmm. broken down into parts along with magazines. Um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some, of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not gonna be able to get into uh, where other items were, were stored. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does, it, does, the, does the memo address or is your office concerned with, uh, with Combs' safety in custody given, mm. um, given what happened with Ep Epstein? Great question. So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case, um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that had been uh, handling that or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So um, I'm not going to get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team, this group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock, um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs' attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, uh, let me just say this. I think that um, generally uh, and in, with increasing frequency, the, the word cooperative or cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and it no longer really bears any relation to what um, uh, the word means when we use it um, in a very specific context. So um, uh, responding to lawful process um, and the like um, does not qualify as cooperation when we use that term here. Mike Sisak, AP. Thanks. To that end, uh, was there any discussion of Mr. Combs surrendering? I understand he was d taken into custody at a hotel in Manhattan last night and maybe that wasn't the plan. Can you elaborate on, on how that came about and why that was? I'm not gonna be able to get into any sort of operational um, details as to how he was taken into custody and when um, he is in custody right now. He will be appearing in court later today. Was there any discussion of him surrendering given you know they claim he's cooperating? I'm not gonna be able to get into law enforcement tactics um, or operations. Well, um, I can't get into the charging decision. It, it is very meaningful to us that weapons uh, were possessed, um, as we allege in the indictment. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why this conduct was so 
um, uh, pervasive and, um, and harmful was because victims and others didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, denying him his wishes, as we allege, um, because of the presence of, of, of firearms. Um, I'll, I should leave it there. Thanks. Last question, Jacob Shamison. Jacob Shamsi and Business Insider, thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that will uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable, um, mm -hmm. but I cannot predict them sitting here today. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Ooh, we. Ooh, we. Of breaking news this evening, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in Manhattan after a grand jury indicted him. Multiple sources are telling ABC News. We're told that federal agents with Homeland Security took him into custody. The singer and producer has been facing scrutiny since his former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, accused him of sex trafficking and years of mm. abuse in a 2023 lawsuit. Most recently, he was accused of years of psychological oh. and physical abuse in a lawsuit filed by singer Don Richard just last week. We're to search Combs properties came from the Southern District of New York, NBC News previously reported. On September 9th, Diddy was ordered by a Michigan judge to pay over $100 million to Derek Lee Cardello Smith, who sued the rapper for allegedly drugging and sexually assaulting him in 1997, according what? to court records viewed by E! News. What? Following the judgment, Combs' attorney said... Following the judgment, Combs' attorney said in a statement to E! News that Cardello Smith is solely looking to defraud the Bad Boys record founder and stated in part, Mr. Combs looks forward to having this judgment swiftly dismissed. Sean Combs built an enterprise consisting of his businesses, but also of personal employees and people loyal to him to help him uh, basically accomplish these sex crimes with which he has been charged. And not only did they help him accomplish these sex crimes, they did a bunch of other criming with him, according to prosecutors, in order to cover it up Jesus. or to keep his victims silent. He's also been charged, Chris, with sex trafficking under force of coercion or transportation with the intent to engage in prostitution. And critical to the allegations are the severity of the violence alleged, use of guns, forced drugging, arson and kidnapping all alleged and suffused throughout not only this indictment but the detention letter that prosecutors sent to the judge today where they outline in 16 pages why Sean Combs should not be released from federal custody prior to his trial. That's why you see Sean Combs and his lawyers saying, hey, we'll put up a $50 million bond package. He's in a world of trouble. And I hate to bring up his name, but it is apropos in this particular situation. Remember what Suge Knight said? Y'all remember that? When Suge Knight said he was in a world of trouble, because Suge Knight said, listen, he knows a lot. And so looking at a potential situation where it could arguably mirror that of Jeffrey Epstein. Remember him? August 10th, 2019. Prison guards found, I'm reading right from online. Guards found American financier and convicted sex offender Jeffrey F. Epstein unresponsive in his jail cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York City, where he was awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Tried to perform CPR, couldn't resuscitate him, pronounced dead at a downtown hospital at 6.39 a.m. What it went on to say in the reports that there were violations because normal jail procedures on the night of Epstein's death wasn't followed. It talked about a malfunction of two cameras in front of his cell. And you got people still to this very day with their conspiracy theories being thrown out there that it wasn't suicide, but ultimately intentional harm was brought to him because he knew too much about too many people. That's what Suge Knight alluded to when he was talking about P. Diddy. And as we sit here today, who the hell can deny that potential reality? Do we know? Ooh. No, we don't know. But what we do know is that these are federal charges. What we do know is that his attorney has been on a record saying that he flew to New York as recently as a couple of weeks ago because they knew this was coming down the pike and he wanted to show compliance and that he wasn't running from anything. And he's expected to plead not guilty. 
And he turned himself in and most early he had turned his passports in and family members had also turned their passports in. Mm. But let's lay this out because we, we, we need to understand that we need to gather a level of education in our own brains to edify ourselves to the kind of trouble you can get yourself in sometimes. Him, obviously so. Clearly, you can sit up there and say you're innocent until proven guilty. Nah. That's in a court of law. In a court of public opinion, he's already been found guilty. Can we just yeah, be real about that's that? Real. That's in real. a court of public opinion, not law. That's in real. a court of public opinion, and a damn soul think he's innocent. That's real. I'm not denigrating or castigating the brother, whatever. I met him at a Golden State Warriors game. One time I went to a party, and it was supposed to be his party. I never saw nothing like that. But without mentioning any names, without incriminating anybody, you see the names? Do you see the people who have befriended him over the years, who have attended his parties, who are considered close to him, who he's been in business with? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? I mean, this has gotten very, very scary. Hollywood's in trouble. Mm. Pop and R&B is in trouble. But the brother's a, a, an elite success story. Had a lot of friends. Had a lot of people vouch for, uh, or once upon a time vouch for him. Right. In terms of his brilliance as an artist, or producer rather. Brother knew how to make money. And now here we are. When mm -hmm. you're in that position and you know so much, I got news for you. It's gotten very, very scary. If it were just him, it would be sad. It would be very unfortunate. But I use the word scary because mm. I get the impression, to put it kindly, that his life ain't the only life that's going to be affected. That they ain't after him just to get him. You got Homeland Security involved. You got the feds involved. I got news for you. They ain't coming just for him. They coming for a whole bunch of people. Ooh, it's going to be spicy. Hey, TikTok, it's Keith the Lawyer. I'm a lawyer, not your lawyer. This is not legal advice, so talk to your own lawyer for that. Well, it's finally happened. Some people may have thought it was gonna go away and never happened, but it's here. Yeah. Diddy has been arrested. He was arrested last night. Uh, the only question that, that remains now is what is gonna be done with him? Where do the feds believe that he fits into this whole scheme? And I think it boils down to whether he is an Epstein or whether he is a Weinstein. Epsteins, we know what happens to them. Mm. They mysteriously decide to end it all. But uh, Weinsteins get protected and their prosecutions just get pushed off and pushed off. So it's going to depend on where Diddy fits into that classification. Uh, what he knows about people, what he's willing to say about people, because mm. the feds are going to try to flip him. That's just how they operate. So it's going to be interesting to see. Epstein, Weinstein. I don't know. This is Keith the Lawyer. Thanks for watching. Brother, that'd be crazy. He get... oh. Resources were deployed to track and detain him. Diddy was arrested under tight security measures indicating the seriousness of the charges against him. The FBI coordinated with local authorities to ensure a smooth operation without any hitches. Following his arrest, Diddy was immediately taken into custody and is expected to be extradited back to the United States to face charges. While the exact charges against Diddy have not been publicly disclosed, there is widespread speculation about the nature of the allegations. Some reports suggest mistreatment crimes, while others hint at more severe accusations. It's interesting that they sent out this letter saying that he's a subject, but I think that his lawyers are already speaking to the Southern District of New York and they know kind of what's going on and that there's a, a, federal, uh, a federal indictment that could be on the horizon. Diddy has been embroiled in various controversies over the years, including allegations of mistreatment and involvement in questionable business practices. It remains to be seen whether these past issues are connected to his current legal troubles. Legal experts believe that the charges against Diddy are likely to be serious, given the FBI's involvement and the international nature of the arrest. If convicted, Diddy could face substantial penalties, including hefty fines and significant prison time. The severity of the charges will determine the length and difficulty of his legal battle. The arrest of one of the music industry's most influential figures has elicited a wave of reactions from celebrities and fans alike. Sam, but these Epstein like characters have existed throughout history, throughout history. whether they were kings or what like mm -hmm. like um human beings are human beings mm -hmm. universally cat williams has also broken his silence on diddy's recent arrest following fbi raids 
unleashing startling revelations. Williams, known for his relentless pursuit of industry truths, is now targeting Diddy, shedding light on allegations of grooming practices within entertainment circles. His focus has within the next week or so. You know, I, I, I've talked to a few people who said, damn, why did he ain't run? There ain't no running here, right? The reason why there ain't no running, yes, his passport isn't taken, but for you to leave legally the United States on any flight, private or commercial, um, there's something called a manifest. You have to register with the uh, FAA, with the location, your origin, the original location to the destination. And They got him. They didn't locked up the dealer, y'all. So it all begins. Remember, Cat Williams said that this is the year that everything will come out. It's crazy how the tables turn, bruh. Mm. Once them people don't need you no more, they show you they don't need you no more. They let shit burn, like literally. When I say they, I can't say too much. Y'all know what I'm talking about for the ones that know. I can't speak too much on it. But y'all, it's about to get real fucking crazy. You remember that video that Diddy did when he was naming all them people, all them motherfucking celebrities? I'm telling you, he got some shit up his sleeve. Like he finna blackmail them to the T. Everybody want that life. Everybody want to sell their yeah. But when you not doing everything in your power to upkeep your spot, they going to replace you. And they don't just kick you to the curb, like, here, have a nice day. Hell no. It's either you going to jail, or they going to make like you crazy, and you know what happened after that. People go, yeah. TikTok, this is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I don't mean nothing I'm talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't know who <laughs> they is. I don't know what they up to. I don't know why Diddy got locked up, but that's why he got locked up. But y'all, I'm telling you, it's finna get sticky, bruh. No Diddy. He got a lot of tapes. That's the only thing that might save him. He got a lot of tapes with a lot of people on it. And that's why they was raiding that man's place because they was looking for them tapes and they couldn't find it. So I don't know, y'all. If y'all want to be updated on this situation, make sure you follow. Like this video, share this video, and I'm gone. Like this video, share this video for sure. I said, if you get on your knees, you're supposed to cry if, oh. you're, singing, if you're singing a song. Oh, okay. We segwayed into the Drink Champs interview. <laughs> when you was with Nora and Fab and Jada and mm. everybody, they made a compilation video with you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course yeah. I didn't see that. No, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I saw the guy. Oh, come yeah. on, man. You saw that whole world. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely... That came from Harlem, too. Bro. Yeah, came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh, my, woo. The crowd would be like, well, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games. Y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um, yeah. The did compilation? You know? Nah, I was... I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some of my play. Hey, yo, listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I, I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, when you put my back, Daddy, I like when you oh, oh, scrambling and scraping for no. shit. That was you. <laughs> scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy, when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> nah, nah. I mean, I you don't go back and look at that stuff and laugh. Hey, man. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. I'm sure know, we can play Charlemagne's compilation against Diddy's. Oh, we have a bunch. We probably have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know, I'm, I know I'm bad at the game. Right? <laughs> I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe, you know, adding up to 
with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't, you know, care. You know what I'm saying? I just, but um, I'm bad at the game and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab to party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, you, we, we partied for my birthday before. You came to my party. You know? No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that. And he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah. I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> yo, why, why are you with 50? Hey, yo. Why y'all got... Hey, yo, I don't have no beef. With, 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 I don't know why. With, with 50. He loves me. He loves me. Do y'all really can't have see a beef? It? I mean, y'all can't see it. No, we can't see it. Y'all can't see that he loves he me. No, we can't you see. really, hold on. You really think that's hate? You really, when you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. You know he loves me. I don't think he like okay. it. Okay. But why, but why not? Y'all y'all both passionate. Y'all both I don't know. I, yo, try to say, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Y'all both the same. No, we are not. Okay. We, we are not the same. <laughs> but, I mean, we are not cut from the, the same cloth. You work hard. Yeah, and, 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 um, you know what I mean? Y'all not the same. This man put up a $50 million bond, $50 million bond. And the judge still said, you're denied. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You're going to jail. You finna be in chains. Out of all the news today, I think I'm still stuck on this $50 million bond. Because if you look at the fact that in California, the average bail amount for murder is $2 million. And your bond amount is 10% of that, right? So that's $200,000. And you can pay your bond by putting up your house, putting up your assets, whatever the case may be. But this man paid off an $18 million home. And the judge still said, nah, you gonna sit in jail. I've talked about mm -hmm. this before, but I'm gonna say it again. I don't care what you have. I don't care what your life looks like. I don't give a fuck what other people have. I really don't. Because what did you do to get it? How did you end up in the position that you're in? Because the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is, if you did something dirty to get where you are, you will have to pay the debt of your transgressions. Ooh. You will have to pay it in full. It might not be on this side. It might be on the other side. But you will never escape the return on the investment that you made to get where you are. And the mm -hmm. return on your investment might be jail. I'm just so shook. <laughs> like, you put up a $50 million bond and they said, nah that ain't gonna work that is a lot of money so i gotta tell you last night <laughs> um i was actually <clears throat> doing a lecture at usc and i got a call from one of our producers that and did he... I, apologies to the students that i bailed but <laughs> we broke a story that diddy got arrested last night arrested last night in new york city by the feds and i gotta tell you charles i have never read 14 pages that contained so much so many shocking information and allegations. Diddy, among other things, um, he has been accused of sex trafficking, um, engaging in a conspiracy to foster prostitution, racketeering, kidnapping, narcotics offenses, arson, bribery. That is the beginning. And the feds lay this all out. That They say that basically his organization, his company, which they refer to as the Combs Enterprise, which certainly sounds more like a... A mob. Like a mob yeah. uh, outfit, uh, that it existed uh, mainly to fuel his desires, uh, wow. often his sexual desires. And they lay out in detail uh, a lot of those sexual desires uh, in, in this indictment. So um, one of the centerpieces and we've talked about this before, are these freak-off parties uh, that, um, that Diddy hosted. And, you know, we all knew... That's the allegation. And remember, Cassie made... That first came to light in Cassie's lawsuit, where she talked about these freak-off parties that he would have at hotels in, she said, in Atlanta, Miami, L.A., and, and they, New York. And they were essentially orgies. But the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, who filed this laid this out at a press conference and specifically addressed the freak-offs. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs. In addition to the violence, 
The indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims. Now, they say they found those recordings of the freak offs during the raids uh, on his homes in Miami and here in LA. Which opens up a whole Pandora's box of who is in this. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things they are alleging, and this is the prostitution charge, which is that Diddy would bring male porn stars across state lines to participate in these freak offs and um, essentially victimize. Yeah. I mean, that's the way they're putting it. Some of the women who were pressured right to be part of this. Yeah, the, the feds are alleging, Harvey, a full-scale criminal enterprise here. He, they say that Diddy was conspiring with many people, mostly his employees, to engage not just in drawing people out across state lines for the purpose of prostitution, forcible coercion of sexual acts, forced uh, drugging and raping of, of women, uh, guns, all sorts of crimes. And drugs. It's all part of a criminal. Drugs. In you heard that you heard Damian Williams, of drugs. The U.S. attorney, MD, talk about these. GHB, oxy, ketamine, which he yes. mentioned. Cocaine, Huge quantities of MD, drugs. MDMA. I mean, just really, uh, uh, Charles, this 14 pages is they shocked a it's lot shocking. in those 14 pages. Uh, and it is now, you know, Diddy's, for, we should say, his side, uh, his attorneys have said that they're Disappointed. I always find that weird when they say we're disappointed yeah. that they decided to pursue this. Well, of course you're disappointed they decided to pursue it, um, but they say they will what? fight this in court and they say that he will uh, plead not guilty and they're going to fight it. Man, it's only the beginning. No bail, no bail. He's detained. We're, we're appealing it. Oh, I'm sorry. We are we're appealing the, the the decision to hold him without bail. When's the next court appearance? Tomorrow at 3:30. 3:30, same place. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. Uh, he came to New York to establish his innocence. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government said in their presentation today that changes anyone's mind about anything. He's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name, and he's going to clear his name. Uh, and we're going to stand by his side as, as he does. We believe in him wholeheartedly. Um, he didn't do these things. This was a 10-year relationship. There's no coercion. There's no crime. There's basically just, you know, so someone who brought a civil case and now uh, is, is finding themselves as a, w a witness in a, in a criminal case. Okay. Okay. They raided his homes and found 1,000 vials of lubricant. Yep, and they oil. raided his home and they found um, narcotics. But that's not, that's not, the lubricant is not. <laughs> it ain't a crime, it, guys. It ain't a crime. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is evidence, it can be used as evidence of a freak off because they also oh, yeah. have, oh, a, yeah. they, they were calling these, these, Orgies, basically, that yeah. he orchestrated yeah. as with a criminal enterprise girls. with underage girls yeah. and in some commercials, of age. in yeah. some of age, and yeah. commercial sex workers. The lubricant ain't a crime. This is crazy. Did he get arrested finally and, and, and get the book ready to be thrown at his very, very, very dancing feet? They're going to be his feet with that law book. That's how many crimes he's done. And everyone's so surprised. You know how weird that is for me? They procure bitches to do <sighs> damage and wild shit. Like, I, it was something like that I said. Why don't nobody ever want to believe me? Mm. Oh. Without Jamil question. Jamal said it himself. 
Jaguar sat on the couch and said he put the boots to that girl and y'all said she was a liar and then we seen it and then y'all just said there's never been an image of uh, Diddy in handcuffs no we now. need that we need that I need that mm. perp walk so as I keep reaching out to victims I can let them know it's safe to come outside mm. So let me ask you, Jag. Um, Diddy was, uh, and we're gonna go through this whole thing real quick. Jaguar but... warned y'all. That's what they say on the yeah, yeah. associate. They got like thirteen thousand people or so over there now. Yeah, mm. everyone's typing in Jaguar. Right, was right. Jag, he's he's trying to say, hey, listen, I I, I hear y'all, but they're letting him know. <laughs> go back and listen to Jaguar. Right. Go, now you have to go watch everything she said. The only thing that's going to make any of this hoopla worth it is if he does a perp walk, if he gets put into a car, if he is treated like the criminal that he is on camera. See, mm. they got all of these images leading up to the secret arrest of him having a good time and doing all of that. But when is he going to start having a bad time? Mm. Mm. Whoa, now what's happening with y'all out there? Check this out. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go again. If it ain't one thing, it's another. I know your neck hurt. I know y'all neck hurt. They've been hitting us with distractions every day. I told y'all, man, these days, weeks, and months are going to be fucking critical before you get to that damn election, man. They didn't, they didn't hit us with a Trump attempt. Gas pipes. Fires. Wars. Border crisis, migrants in these states, and the list gonna continue to go. And this is another one right here with P. Diddy. Listen here, man. You laid in that bed, you gonna have to motherfucking deal with the consequences. You know what I'm saying? They done jammed his ass up. And a lot of y'all like, oh, well, he gonna get up on the stand and he gonna tell on a lot of folks and bring everybody down. No, he ain't. That boy that was dealing with some heavy hitters. His, the best thing he can do is keep his head down and get ready for that time before he get a tent put on his ass. Now, mm. y'all saying, oh, well, I feel bad for the kids. No, you don't. Them kids rich than them all, man. They got all kind of shit. They can sell a bunch of shit. They got money what they done made over the years. I don't know. I know black folks. I know people that went to jail. You know what I'm saying? They had number maybe $150, $130 in the account, and that's all they left their damn kids and went up that damn road. So mm. don't feel sorry for a rich motherfucker like this when it's regular people in the streets getting football numbers and ain't got shit to leave their motherfucking kids. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell y'all this. A motherfucker like that right there, with all that type of money, with all the influence that he had on the culture, all he did was over black folks. You know what I'm saying? And then do nothing right when he should have been pushing the culture further. When he should have been creating all kind of jobs and programs. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the look forward into the future. But instead, he want to f*** over his own people. Man, that's what you going to get. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody finna throw no pity party and cry for my like this. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell y'all this. They hitting us with the distractions. They got you looking this way, that way, forward, back, forward, that way. God damn. You know what I'm saying? This shit about to snap off your motherfucking neck. Y'all better pay attention, man. They throw these type of shits out here. They wait for a certain time, and then they boom. Hit you with some shit like this to make you look that way. But I'm telling you, it's big as shit going on right now, man. And these folk going to continue to play with y'all as long as you let them. Keep your head on the swivel because 2024 going to be a year like you've never seen before. I'm telling you. This P. Diddy shit, man, this shit is a distraction, man. I'm telling you. To keep your eyes on what's going on. Keep your eyes off of Kamala. Keep your eyes off of that border. To keep your eyes off of, of what's going on overseas with mother Russia and North Korea and, and, and Israel and all these other countries. To keep your mother mind taking off these, these mother gangs, these Venezuela gangs and shit. Man, you better open up your eyes and stop worrying about this little shit. By the mother Diddy. You better start worrying about goddamn uh, real life. Worry about your mother household. Worry about your mother job if it's going to be one tomorrow. Y'all step out there and get it out the mud. Speaking facts, though.
Diddy's indictment is showing all the criminal charges that led to his arrest. So we're about to jump into Diddy's indictment and do a deep dive on everything that he's being charged with and the evidence that's being used against him. Diddy's charges are federal, so it's the United States of America versus Diddy, mm. and the grand jury charges are count one of racketeering of conspiracy. For decades, the defendant abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his physical desires, to protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Diddy relied on the employees, resources, and influence of his multi-faced business empire that he led and controlled, creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates associates engaged in and attempted to gauge in other crimes such as trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The defendant engaged in persistent and persuasive patterns of abuse towards women and other individuals. This abuse at times was verbal, emotional, physical, and cool. Diddy manipulated women to participate in highly orchestrated performances of activities with male workers. Diddy and others at his discretion made arrangements for women and these workers to fly to Diddy's locations. Diddy ensured participation from these women by distributing narcotics to them, controlling their careers, leveraging their financial support, and threatening to cut them off, using intimidation and violence. Physical abuse towards women has been well known about Diddy, and from 2009 to continuing years, Diddy has assaulted women by, among other things, such as striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects, and kicking them. Diddy used his business, including his employees, to carry out, felicitate, and cover up his abuse and trafficking. These employees included security staff, household staff, personal assistants, high-ranking supervisors, and other close associates attached to Combs. Mm. From 2008 to the present time of this indictment, the defendant and others known and unknown were members and associates of a criminal organization. Wow. The members and associates of the Comb Enterprise engaged in, attempted to engage in, other activities such as trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion, and enticement to engage in prostitution, narcotics, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Diddy's Enterprise was an ongoing organization whose members functioned as a continuing unit for the common purpose of achieving objectives wow. of the Combs Enterprise. Diddy's Enterprise was engaged in and its activities affected interstate and foreign commerce. The purpose of Combs Enterprise was to operate a global business in the media, entertainment, and lifestyle industry, including other things such as record labels, recording studios, an apparel line, alcoholic business, a marketing agency, and a television network and media company. The defendants and others, known and unknown, participated in unlawful and other activities related to the conduct of Combs Enterprise Affairs. These individuals included Combs business employees, such as members of Combs security staff, household staff, personal assistants, high-ranking supervisors, and as well as other close associates of Mr. Combs. Diddy and other members and associates of the Comb Enterprise wielded their power to intimidate, threaten, and lure female victims into Combs' orbit. They often presented a romantic relationship with Combs, then used force, threats of force, coercion, to cause victims to engage in acts with male workers. Diddy referred to these as freak-offs. Freak-offs were elaborated and produced performances that Combs arranged, directed, and pleasured himself during and often electronically recorded. In arranging these free goss, Diddy and the assistance of the members and associates of the Combs Enterprise transported and caused to be transported workers across state lines and internationally. These free goss occurred regularly and sometimes lasted during multiple days thing. and often involved multiple workers. During these free goss, Diddy distributed a variety of controlled substances to the victims to keep the victim obedient and compliant it, and that sometimes it was unknown to these victims. Diddy also kept the videos of the victims being filmed with these workers, and after the freak-offs, the victims would typically receive IV fluids to recover from the physical extortion and the drug use. 
Members and associates of the Combs Enterprise felicitated the freak off, among other things, such as booking the hotel rooms for the freak offs, stocking the hotel rooms in advance with required freak off supplies, including controlled substances, baby oil, lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. And they cleaned the hotel rooms after the freak offs to try to mitigate room damage and arrange for the traveling for the victims. They would also deliver large sums of cash to Combs to pay these workers and schedule the delivery of the IV fluids. Hobbies. During the raids on Diddy's houses in March of 2024, they seized freak-off supplies, including narcotics and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Diddy subjected the victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse to cause the victims to engage in the freak-offs. He maintained control of his victims through physical violence, promises of career opportunities, granting and threatening. This is craziness to the next level, bro. How many people do y'all think is going to go down because of this right here? In the comments, man, y'all got to let me know, man, how many people, whoa. Needing to withhold financial support and other coercive means. He would track their whereabouts, dictating victims' appearances, monitoring their medical records, controlling their housing, and supplying them with controlled substances. He would also hit, kick, throw objects at, and drag victims at times by their hair. He also threatened the victim's careers and livelihood if they resisted to participate mm. in these freak-offs, and the victims believed that they could not refuse Diddy's commands without risking their financial or job security or without repercussion in the form of physical or emotional abuse. They used the sensitive, embarrassing, and incriminating recordings that he made during these freak-offs as collateral to ensure the continued obedience and silence of the victims. Members and associates of Combs Enterprise, including security personnel, at times carried firearms. On more than one occasion, Diddy himself carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten others, including victims and witnesses of his abuse. In Whoa. about March 2024, during the raids on Diddy's home in Miami, Florida, law enforcement seized firearms and ammunition, including three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers, as well as a drum magazine. When Diddy's authority or reputation was threatened by the possibility of negative publicity or legal or law enforcement action against him, including in about 2023 following the public allegations of Diddy's crimes, Diddy and the members and associates of the enterprise pressured witnesses and victims, including attempted bribery to stay silent and not report what they witnessed or what they knew to law enforcement. On phone calls, Diddy and other members and associates of the enterprise, among other things, provided these victims and witnesses with a false narrative of events in effort to conceal Diddy's crimes. Mm. Diddy caused these calls to be recorded on at least two occasions. And based on wow. all the information that we already went through, count two is by trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion. Count three is transportation to engage in prostitution. Now, if Diddy is found guilty on all of these charges, there is forfeiture allegations listed in this that is talking about all of his businesses and property, whether they're in his name or not, being seized. And a mm. lot of people talk about how Diddy had put his businesses and his houses in his child's name and his mother's name. And mm. baby, this is all listed right in here that anything that he owned during the time of these offenses, if he's found guilty, they are coming and they are taking it. So this is all of the highlights of Diddy's indictment. So you guys let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Craziness. That's what I think. An unsealed indictment has just been released in the case of Sean P. Diddy Combs. And I must warn you that this is incredibly disturbing. So if it's not for you, please scroll up. At present, P. Diddy is in custody and has been denied bail. Now, the allegations spring from a number of different sources, but fundamentally a search at his property revealed a number of items that allegedly were his, including firearms and a thousand bottles of lubricant. The allegation appears to be that Sean P. Diddy Combs exerted control over artists and um, people in his life using a number of very concerning modalities, including one called Freak Off. Freak Off is when he would invite a commercial um, escort or adult worker often and mostly men, across state lines in some instances, to engage in acts 
with artists that he represented. And at the time, mm-hmm. he would gather evidence on them and he would gather information on them. He would potentially um, capture this in some form. And then he would use it to coerce, blackmail, and force them to do what he wanted them to do. If they refused, he would become physically, verbally, or otherwise violent with them. Now, because apparently there was trafficking across state lines, that's one of the reasons it's a federal case. But he's been charged with racketeering and a number of other serious charges. And over the last few years, various people have come forward and cases have been launched against P uh, P. Diddy relating to a number of different matters, including um, by Cassie, who, if you've seen that horrific and harrowing footage of him absolutely assaulting her violently when she's in a hotel room. He is entitled to the presumption of innocence and he is entitled to have his day in court. However, these are exceedingly serious allegations and it is very concerning that... uh, it's taken this long for them to be made. And my heart goes out to any potential victim because it, it's just unimaginable that what they may have had to go through. Follow me for more legal TikTok. Mm-mm. The feds arrested Diddy. And I know everybody was confused because we was a lot of people was asking, why is Diddy not in jail? The story broke that said they found a thousand bottles of lube at Diddy's house. And that's why... Everything made sense, because how are you going to catch a slippery motherfucker like that? And when, when they was arresting the kids in his house, he slipped out the back gate because he had that much lube. Like, can you imagine showing up to your first freak off and you walk in the room and they got towers of baby oil? I, I got to go. I, I need a junior freak off before I do this. What the hell going on in here? And this might be a Rico. And if this is the case, then Costco needs to be part of this. Co- the whole Costco needs to go there because you shouldn't let nobody buy a thousand bottles of baby oil. This boy Diddy got the federal government on TV talking about freak offs. 3.35 p.m. We presumed to find a thousand plus bottles of baby oil. And we could allegedly say this is a part of the freak offs that uh, Diddy Sean Combs was a boy. Like, what are we doing here with your dumb ass? <laughs> with your dumb ass. John Diddy Combs, the music icon, now under arrest. This after a grand jury indicted the music mogul just last night. Now, this indictment is expected to be unsealed this morning, but good day's Robert Moses. He joins us from Lower Manhattan with the very latest. Robert, good morning. Tashani and Dan, good morning to you. The arrest went down last night at a hotel about four miles to the north of this courthouse where Diddy will appear later on today. We expect prosecutors to lay out their evidence against him in a matter of hours. Homeland Security officers arrested 54-year-old Sean Diddy Combs last night at the Park Hyatt on West 57th Street. In a statement, his attorney, Mark Agnifilo, said Combs relocated to the city last week in anticipation of the charges which Agnifilo told the New York Times he believes are sex trafficking and racketeering. Combs will be arraigned today. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said the prosecutors will have more to say when the indictment is unsealed this morning. You better guard also well. And I put your brother in jail, too. I lock him up, too. You know that. <laughs> Keep playing. Keep playing. I Cassie Dassey is at, but I don't need his money. I ain't got to do that. All them other tricky dickies that he'd have been beating on and taking their cooter, they going to lock him up. I ain't got to do it. I'm going to sit back and watch. That's what I'm going to do. Girl, y'all better go sit down somewhere, girl. Y'all already in hot water. <laughs> you don't want to get bored over here, boops. Move around, big backs. Just move on around and enjoy your little fame you got right now. Your little, your little 12 minutes that's left. You had a long run. Had you about 15, 16, 17 years of running. You know, move around now. Go bunker dunker with Diddy. Ain't that his bestie? Won't mm. even get that man a shake of a hand right now. That's sad. Niggas will be all on your nuts. You know what I'm saying? This, when something go down, they gone. They out of there like Houdini. He go give his friend a hug. Because I wouldn't do my friend like that. I wouldn't. You was holding up the Ciroc bottles between your balls. <laughs> go over there and go get that man a hug now. Help him sell his house, Renee. You're a realtor. Give us a referral. Y'all buy it. Remember Will was saying he can't wait till he sell it. They lock him up and, and the Diddy house go up for sale over there on Stock. Diddy house go up for sale over there on Style. It'll be up for Diddy house go up for sale over there on Style. It'll be up for sale now, big boss. Go buy it. You forgot you were saying that? Look at that. You next, though, because you such a hater. 
I can't wait to see you in the media getting shut down. Because it's coming. I done heard you had about six women living in one house up there in Atlanta, screwing them all. I done heard. And that Wembley Point house, the first house, not the Holyfield house. He got another house in Atlanta, if y'all didn't know that. Jeez, boy, these boys, man. Diddy is going to jail. Quite some time ago, I talked about Puff Daddy. I talked about Homeland Security raiding his residence. When I talked about this, I made it clear that when Homeland Security comes after you, there's going to be charges. When we talked about the charges, as of today, he has been arrested, and this is his indictment. A couple of things that are interesting. Once, if you, they got all of his nicknames listed on the indictment. Puff, Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, P. D., and Love. Um... He has charged with racketeering. What is racketeering? The simplest way to describe it is racketeering is like some mob shit. It's literally saying that you have a legal organization, but what the government says is your legal organization is doing illegal shit and trying to hide it. And that's what they're saying about Puff Daddy, that mm. you have an organization. <laughs> that boy, take that, take that, take that. Stop. And they're all engaged in doing illegal stuff to promote the overreaching goals of the enterprise, which is you, Diddy. Um, I expect as far as that racketeering count, they're going to be naming a bunch of other people and all those people will eventually cooperate and snitch on Diddy, Diddy going mm -hmm. down. Number two, which I thought was very interesting in talking about the massive indictment is a couple of things. They talk about the fact um, in this enterprise, they call it freak offs. They mention freak offs throughout the point in the indictment. They say after freak offs, Combs and the victims typically received IV fluids to recover from physical That's exertion and drug crazy. use. Damn. And then number two in the indictment, which I thought was absolutely interesting. IV. Law enforcement seized various freak off supplies, including narcotics and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. <laughs> I don't think they mentioned that shit to be nice. And they said, uh, Diddy, you in trouble. Then they also charged him with sex trafficking, which we already talked about. And they also charged him with basically transporting women across county lines to engage in prostitution. So, Diddy's going to jail. We asked what is the difference between federal court prosecution and state court prosecution. Federal court prosecution, what ends up happening, the easiest way I describe it is the feds do the work before they arrest an individual usually. So they build their case. So they have a very large case, a good case against the person that they're going after. They spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy going after somebody. State court cases, a lot of time they do the research and the work after they've already arrested somebody. Translation, if somebody comes to somebody and says, that guy hit me, that guy raped me, that guy stole from me, he gets arrested right then and there, and then they start looking into it. Federal government, they take their time, energy, and effort, and that's what they're doing against Diddy. Um, Diddy's going to jail. So when somebody asks me, what do I think is likely to happen when the federal government usually comes after you? Your ass is in trouble. Take that, take that, take that. Mm. Dang, boy. Yeah, man, they've come down with the charges now, man. So apparently the feds, everybody was saying that the feds didn't have this, didn't have that. Apparently the feds had it. Apparently the feds had the blicky, and they just now let this go. Uh, they let that thing go on Puff, man. Now, again, according to the reports, this, they have caught him. And, and this is the thing. They are trying him in New York, which is one of the toughest uh, places to be tried with the feds. According to the reports, New York is the toughest place to be tried. All those uh, people that was testifying and doing lawsuits, I think that they told everybody to get your lawsuits in now mm. uh, before we snatch him up. And that's why I think y'all saw a rain of lawsuits coming down the last couple of days. And I think that the feds have been talking to all these people. Y'all don't. Y'all thought that the feds were just going to run in there, waste all them people money going there, and then come out and not do nothing? No, mm. the feds are going to wait, comb through the information, See what they had. And I'm telling you guys, I'm thinking that the feds have witnesses. And that's what I think is going to make this oh, yeah. case is that it's going to be all them people that y'all see in Sue and Puff. They're going to have these people go up testifying against him. They're going to make this criminal as well to make sure. See, people that Sue and Puff, they're suing him civilly. Right. But when you have so many witnesses, that girl came out from Danity, Danity Kane. That girl came out, Don Richardson said that Usher and Neo 
And Jimmy Iovine allegedly witnessed this. So what did I tell you guys the feds are going to do? They're probably going to call them as material witnesses to ask them, did you witness the beatings of Cassie? And here's the problem. They have this man putting his hands on Cassie on tape. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what's going to destroy him. Nothing his lawyer can say now. His lawyer can say all of this stuff is bogus. They leaked that tape for that. And let me say this. We don't know what else they have on tape. Facts. We don't know what else they have on tape. That is the point that y'all don't understand. Normally, when they leak little stuff, you don't see everything they have on tape. So you don't know what else the feds have on tape that when this thing goes to trial, it is going to be bigger than the O.J. Simpson trial. It's going to be bigger than the R. Kelly trial. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the biggest trial in America. Mm. And when them tapes come out, I'm telling y'all this, and them people to get up there and testify, and they, when the feds call you to testify, they're going to call them people to testify under the penalty of perjury. Them people put them people in them lawsuits, bro. When that girl Dawn Richards put all them people, she put Usher name. She put Neo name. She put guy dag on Jimmy Iovine name. Now all these people going to have to testify, and guess what? Cassie's probably going to testify. And when they put mm. Cassie on the stand, they're going to ask Cassie, did Usher, did Neo, did Jimmy Iovine and them witness these be alleged? Ooh. And if she says yes, guess what? The, the, the got that on jury going to believe that. You know why? Because they've seen the video or that mm. they already leaked the video. Mm. You don't know what other videos they have. You don't know what other witnesses they have. Remember, remember when Pete Diddy got caught at the airport that first time with that boy? Remember the boy he got caught with? The boy that used to play at Syracuse University basketball? Mm -mm. And that boy got popped for having those things and that on getting ready to get on that on that jet? Yeah. And he had and he had those, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, you guess what? He copped a plea. He copped a plea to get no prison time. Them fans get you in that room. They put pressure on dudes who might be timid. That boy's parents was not letting him go to prison for that. Right. So when you think about that, now they're not letting him go to prison on that on that charge. They're not letting him go to prison. So when they said that he copped out without and, and when he plead out, when they said he plead out and didn't get no no time, he snitched on somebody, bro. Now who else was at the airport with him? Puff. And who? What did Lil Rod say in the lawsuit that that was the dude? So you got all these people out here talking about something. These people are going to be used as material witnesses. This is going to be the biggest trial you've ever seen. And guess what? It's going to be celebrities, actors, all them people yep. that's called to testify in yep. this case. It's going to be yep. unbelievable, bro. I'm telling y'all. Yep. Yep. That's why I don't know what Puff got on them tapes, what he had on them hard drives, what he had on any of these things that you never know the feds might got. You don't know who's testifying. You don't know who's at those parties that was testifying that testified. That the feds got their hands on and came forward, shook down, may have gave payments to to testify. You never know what's going on. But it's crazy now because they got enough to, to arrest them. Mm -hmm. They got enough to arrest them. And, and all them people that's in those lawsuits commit uh, 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 admitting to seeing criminal activity, guess what? Now it goes from civil to what? Criminal. To criminal. Yep. Ooh, we. I can't do that. What's next? Give me something else. What can't you do? I can do it. I can do anything. I must confess. Not surprisingly, Diddy has been denied bail. But let's talk about something I think is even more interesting. TikTok this is, is Diddy's defense attorney's proposed bail package. This is what they presented to the prosecutor saying, we would agree to bail under these terms. This is what we're asking for. They're asking for a bond of $50 million. They're asking that the bond be secured by Diddy's residence located in Star Island in Miami. The home has a value of $48 million. In anticipation of this bail hearing on August 20th, 2024, Mr. Combs paid off the remaining mortgage of about $18 million so that the home could be used to secure a bond and be free of mm. a mortgage. He knew it's clear that Diddy and his attorneys expected this arrest as mm. early as likely April, because if you look at this down here, it says that back in April, he gave his attorney his passport. So if Diddy and his attorneys knew and they anticipated this arrest and likely this bail hearing, 
What other big financial things has he sort of moved around? Has he hidden, maybe? Mm. What other evidence of crimes could he have maybe covered up between April and now? I don't know, y'all. Also, side note, but the fact that the proposed bail package also proposed that Diddy's like newborn baby, Love, give up her passport too is just really wow. sending me right now. Wow, the baby. Y'all want to know the part of the Diddy um, arrest that really brings me joy? It's just knowing the amount of people that's about to fall. Mm. T.D. Jakes. Ooh. Every single man and woman and woman. Because what's old girl name that was on Love and Hip Hop that was in that little group? Baby, you're never seeing that music career again. We all know she likes to get freaky from Love and Hip Hop, right? So that's why when Dawn came out with her lawsuit and put you in the lawsuit and you decided to make a, a statement that you never saw anything, you made that statement because, baby, you were involved. Use a freaky frog. You're a freaky frog and you were involved. So you try to clear your name. Talking about, I'm just focused on my music. What music? When was the last time that girl put out music? I don't know. Well, Y'all know the one I'm talking about. The one that made the statement. The one that made the you statement. You started going off. One. I don't know. But lock her up too. I just know he finna get in there and start singing like a canary. Like a fucking canary to save his ass. Because baby, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. Actually, you're going to prison. You're going to prison. The question is, for how long? You try to give them 50 mil, talk about, let me go. They said, you can hold on to it because you're going to need it for lawyer fees. You're going to need that 50 mil. I'm just sad that those poor twin girls are going to be flipping burgers. Oh. Because you are going to have to spend their trust funds to save your ass. But you're going to jail. Listen, he probably got some politicians, some pastors in his arsenal. You know what I'm saying? That might not make him stay in jail until he dies. But you're going to prison and I can't fucking wait. I can't wait till they start dropping like fucking flies. Every man that came out in his fucking defense, I can't mm. wait for them to round you the fuck up. Mm. The fuck up. These are exciting times we're living in. I told you this gonna get spicy. LeBron James comments on P. Diddy getting arrested and basically saying that he had a weird feeling today was the day the feds will actually catch up to Diddy. I guess we can all confirm that LeBron James was the anonymous tipster that gave up. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna keep it a glass of water, y'all. This is nasty work. Y'all remember before a couple months ago that we saw that LeBron James was saying Ain't no party like a Diddy party. <laughs> Some people will say that LeBron James should go to jail. Chill out, y'all, all right? We all know that this is a troll oh, post. Man. Well, it is actually true that P. Diddy did go to jail, though. But not me. About LeBron James' whole situation is crazy, and that's that's lies. But it's still funny just to see that. <laughs> feel me? Um, y'all let me know how y'all feel about the whole P. Diddy situation and LeBron James. But you Ray Snow, what's up? I'm not excited. All right, LeBron. I think we finally can make this official because I know it's a lot of people who are still on the fence. Like, oh, he haven't been charged with nothing. These is money grabs or all this other stuff that they were saying and all the excuses you may have been giving Diddy. Let me help you out. The feds don't come and get nobody. They don't knock on your door. They don't play around. Put you in handcuffs for fun fun. And when they come to get you, they got a 90% turnover rate. So that means nine times out of 10, this one is over. You could put the final bells and whistles on this one. We can officially wrap this one up almost. Yeah. Yeah, they don't play. Look, now I'm not here trying to say that Brother Love, P. Diddy, Pub Daddy, Sean Combs deserves any type of bail in this situation. But law enforcement officials confiscated narcotics and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricants from Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles during the raids in March 2024. Now, we got to pause for a second. 
because was it 500 bottles in Miami and 500 in Los Angeles or was he baby oil heavy in Miami and lubricant heavy in Los Angeles where they making a lubricant slip and slide to the master bedroom we got freak off footage also in the mix it's a whole lot going on but of all of the charges that he's been charged for I gotta say the headline itself is quite ridiculous did he it's a lot of questions this might be an opportunity for R. Kelly to kind of save face because this is so egregious. I don't even know how to feel about it. Bro, well, come on. You imagine what Diddy's going through. So, so this is what breakfast is. So today is Tuesday. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday, he'll get fruit, cereal, breakfast cake, Sugar substitute. I know it sounds good on paper. It don't look that good. Okay. His lunch is going to either be a hamburger or a black bean burger. A baker. This is like school lunch, if you, if you know what I mean. Lettuce or tomatoes, sliced onions, um, ketchup. Why well, I say catsup? Ketchup or mustard. Um, whole wheat, hamburger bun. These are options you could choose from. Fruit and beverage. And then for dinner, pasta with ma marinara, chef salad or tofu chef salad, beets, dressing, assorted, um, and whole wheat bread and some type of beverage. Hmm. Pretty much this is about the same. He gets pizza on Saturday. Pizza comes in on, he gets cheese pizza on Saturday. Academic. But you know, you ever had Eddie. school lunch pizza? Lord, Diddy is staying in jail. He was not granted bond. He paid off his mansion. I think they say he put $18 million up to pay it off, trying to put it up for a $50 million bond. The judge said no. He will be in jail. Yeah. No bond. Diddy was the untouchable man. He was on the Mount Rushmore of hip hop moguls. There was nothing he couldn't do, no space that he couldn't dominate, whether that was music, pop culture, fashion, education, politics. I mean, my entire life, Diddy was the man. Sean Combs, the music mogul whose career has been upended by sexual assault lawsuits and a federal investigation, was arrested in Manhattan on Monday evening after a grand jury indicted him according to a person familiar with the indictment who was not authorized to speak publicly. The charges in the indictment were not immediately clear. Mr. Combs, 54, who is also known as Diddy and Puff Daddy, was a key figure in the global rise of hip hop as a commercial force in the 1990s and 2000s, helping to make stars of rappers and R&B singers like the notorious B.I.G. and Mary J. Blige. But he has been under intense public scrutiny since a former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, filed a lawsuit last November accusing him of years of sexual and physical abuse. Years. Mr. Combs settled the suit with Ms. Ventura, an R&B singer known as Cassie, who had been signed to Mr. Combs's record label, in one day and denied any wrongdoing. But legal pressure mounted over the next nine months, with the filing of five lawsuits by women alleging sexual assault and three other sexual misconduct suits all of which Mr. Combs' lawyers are fighting in court. In March, federal agents raided Mr. Combs' homes in Los Angeles and Miami Beach, Florida, stopping him at a Miami area airport and confiscating his electronic devices. The authorities made no announcements at the time, but a federal official said the inquiry was at least in part a human trafficking investigation. Federal prosecutors in New York had by that time interviewed a number of witnesses about sexual misconduct allegations against Mr. Combs according to a person familiar with the interviews. <sighs> man, this is going to be interesting. September on the way, man. You still think Diddy get arrested? I believe, he gonna, I, I believe he's coming in September. Because you got to realize the grand jury intervened. They may have 45 days, 60 days, 90 days. They never usually go past 120 days. They got enough information and they probably got enough stuff that he's probably willing to plea bargain or see if they're going to give him that. Or if they're going to let him plead or something. 
but I don't think the grand jury is going past 120 days. And this is inside information you're getting, right? Or this is something you believe personally? Well, I believe that personally. And then for the fact of the matter is that I know somebody who testified to the grand jury to the uh, Homeland Security. And they probably, they was made reference to some like, uh, they thought that they was gonna, they couldn't go nowhere around in September or whatever like that. So mm. maybe around in September, something to happen. Well, that's what they waiting on. That's why all these documentaries and these people are waiting on. They waiting on him to get arrested. They waiting on the grand jury to say, we find him guilty, we indict him, and the whole nine yards. And watch how many documentaries and how many mm. uh, uh, YouTubers and everybody gonna talk about it and everything like that. But it is what it is. This is how Wendy Williams would have covered Diddy gotten arrested today. Oh, if only she was here, but I'm gonna do my best. No class today, no class. Get this, Sean Diddy Combs mm -hmm. arrested after a grand jury indictment. What? Yup, yup, yup. Suzanne, mm -hmm. you know we've been covering this. Northman text me, send me an emergency text message. I enjoy, I'm sitting on the couch, Milo and Chit Chat, they're just wrestling. I'm like, these damn cats. Northman is bling, bling, bling. I'm like, not Norman, no. Norman, you know, eight o'clock, that's my time. Get this, get this, it was valid reasoning. Well, according to our friends at the Vulture article, Sean Diddy Combs mm -hmm, was arrested in the lobby of a hotel in Manhattan on Monday, September 16th. In the wake of numerous allegations, of, they're telling me to say allegations, we know. When he was running around and with the Risha girl, we knew what was going on. Now his lawyer shared a statement to Vulture and they said, we are disappointed with the decision to pursue what we believe is an unjust prosecution of Mr. Combs by the U.S. Attorney. Mm-hmm. Lemony. Let me tell you something. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Wendy. And I was almost burned at the stake for revealing what's coming true to now. Sean, it's time to do your time. Clap if you agree. Clap, clap. Suzanne, don't encourage them. Let them clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said persecution. Oh. Diddy was arrested, so let's talk about it. Okay, so if you don't know P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever you want to call him, bad boys, um, entrepreneur, whatever you want to call him, have been arrested. He has been taken into custody by the feds. Let me tell you something. What's done in the dark comes to the light. This end that industry is sick. Sick, sick, sick. He is not the only one, and he is not... Mm -mm. I am very interested in who he, or who they're going to take down with him because I am sure yeah. he's going to open his mouth to to save his own ass. Let's just be for real about this. He's going to he's going to save himself. So I do believe he's going to throw some people under the bus. He'll probably need to be thrown under the bus, and I'm sure there's plenty of them that needs to be thrown under the bus, taking advantage of of, of young girls, taking advantage of people, um, the, his performers and his artists and things of that nature. To you men that take advantage of women, that yield your power to get what you want, and we we know what I'm talking about. Mm. You type of men in any industry, every industry, y'all are going down. Y'all are going down, and it needs to stop. It needs to stop. Taking advantage, getting trying to get what you want at the expense of somebody else that that want to come up, that want to mm -hmm. be in in particular spaces. That I do feel sorry for his daughters being that they lost their mother and now they they have to potentially, mm. you know, see their father go to prison for a long time because the, when the feds come for you, they got a case against you. And they're going to and they're going to take you down. They the the the, the conviction rate is stellar. It's like 96 percent. I feel bad for his children. Many celebrities have reacted to Diddy being arrested. First, Queen Latifah said, 
I won't hold my breath yet. Next, Serena Williams said, and now I hope justice is finally served. Next, mm -hmm. LeBron James said, it's crazy. I was bumping to Mo Money Mo Problem earlier today in the car, and I had a weird feeling today was the day the feds will catch Diddy. Next, Aubrey O'Day said, the purpose of justice is to provide an ending and allow us the space to create a new chapter. Women never get this. I feel validated. Today is a win for women all over the world, not just me. Things are finally changing. Next, mm -hmm. Drake said, knew this would happen. Next, Rihanna left a comment underneath a post that said, karma, good or bad, what you put out comes back to you. In her comment, she said, it come for everybody. And finally, Lizzo said, finally. To fans' delight, Diddy has finally been arrested after months of people making allegations against him. He was arrested in a hotel in New York recently on unspecified federal charges as a result of raids on two of his properties in Los Angeles and Miami. This follows months of serious allegations against Diddy for doing terrible things to women. Cassie has come forward and filed a lawsuit against him and fans were immediately on her side. They slammed Diddy for his actions and were disgusted when a woman came forward and accused him of trafficking her when she was just 17 years old. Fans mm -hmm. are horrified by Diddy's actions and say that it is such a shame that he let money and fame go to his head. They say that he sets a terrible example for people and they want to see him punished with the maximum sentence. Celebrities seem really glad that he has finally been arrested and a lot of them seem to think it's been a long time coming. One fan said, it's about time. Diddy's been getting away with terrible things for far too long. It's good to see that justice is finally catching up with him. I hope this sends a message to other powerful people who think they're above the law. Another fan said, I'm getting tired of all the celebrity pile on. It feels like everyone's trying to get their two cents in. Let the legal system do its job and stop with the public shaming. For some of them gonna get brought More up. than a thousand bottles of body oil and lubricants and IV treatments after these freak off parties. If you wanna know why P. Diddy is getting arrested, I just went through the 14 page indictment that was just released. I'm only gonna show you the parts that you need to see from this so you don't have to go through the whole thing. But again, this is gonna be a lot to try to censor on here. There's tons in this document. So in an effort to not get this suppressed, please press the buttons. Anyway, so it looks like they're going after him and all of his associates that work for Combs Enterprises mm. for engaging in criminal activity including as trafficking forced labor kidnapping arson bribery and obstructing justice also look at this name sean combs aka puff daddy aka p diddy aka diddy aka pd aka love on every line they had to put that they're saying that he engaged in all kinds of abusive behavior against women uh verbal emotional physical and that he was manipulating women into doing highly orchestrated performances that were you know orchestrated by him um, with other male S workers. It's at this point in the document where I start figuring out that the freak off parties are just Diddy orchestrating real life corn because it's not enough for him to watch anymore. So he is transporting real life humans to him to put on performances against their will for him to consume. And having this level of boredom and having enough money to be able to do this to human beings is exactly why billionaires should not exist. But I digress. He would ensure the participation of these women by giving them, you know, narcotics and controlling their careers, uh, finances, and basically threaten to end them if they didn't do it. Now this is where they go into the fact that everyone who was working for his business, including certain employees, were mm. carrying out facilitating this and covering up his abuse. It talks about his security staff, his household staff, his personal assistants, uh, high-ranking supervisors, wow. everyone that was working for him is gonna be under fire now Crazy. because they were conducting and facilitating and assisting him in doing these things. This part went on to talk a little bit about the function of Combs Enterprises. They talk about how basically they were enticing the members by making their lives better if they were willing to conceal his crimes for him. Preserving, protecting, promoting, and enabling the power of Combs Enterprises, including the power of its leader, Combs, through violence, use of firearms, threats of violence, coercion, verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. This part gets worse. It talks about how Combs and the members and associates of his business uh, used his prestigious role as P. Diddy to intimidate, threaten, and lure female victims into his orbit um, after under the guise of having a romantic relationship with him, uh, and then he would use and force them with threats and coercion into becoming one of his victims. And here's where they start talking about the freak-off parties. So... He was enticing girls to get into his orbit under the guise of that your life is going to get better, you're going to be my mm. girlfriend, and then he was bringing them to these freak-off parties. Amongst other things, the freak-off parties were, like I said earlier, uh, elaborate produced performances Crazy. arranged by Combs, directed 
and he would watch and enjoy during um, and they were also electronically recorded. So he's also in a lot of trouble for transporting all of the workers to these parties, workers and victims. So it says that he transported the commercial S workers across state lines um, intentionally for these parties and then would distribute various controlled substances. I don't know if you guys remember, but there were often pictures of outside his home having huge black vans and one of his neighbors at the time that all of this stuff started coming out said that there were often these buses going in and out of his house all hours of the night and women standing around them. That seems to match up with what is being said here. Week offs occurred regularly and sometimes lasted multiple days. Combs That's kept crazy. videos he filmed of the victims engaging in the acts with the commercial workers. And after these freak off parties, Combs would typically provide IV fluids so that they could physically recover from the exertion and the substances his team is in trouble for booking rooms for these parties to occur and also for making sure that he was set up with everything he needed including the substances the baby oil lubricant uh linens anything that he would need for these parties basically they're saying there's other people involved in helping him facilitate this and they're all going down the victims of these parties were often subjected to all kinds of abuse um and afterwards Diddy would maintain his control over them by promising them careers, uh, threatening physical violence, granting and threatening and withholding financial support over their head, uh, coercion, all kinds of things. This also says that he would maintain control over them by supplying them controlled substances, which probably means getting them hooked on them, which is exactly what his past bodyguard said that he had planned to do to Danny D. Kane. Apparently, according to that bodyguard, Diddy said to a room full of people that he was going to get Danity Kane hooked on drugs and use them as workers for him. The list goes on about him being in trouble for transporting him for the enterprise, also I having accountability one. in that. And then it also goes on to just say that there was involvement in kidnapping, which is just crazy. I mean, this pretty much covers it all. And apparently he is about to plead not guilty. All right, so that was P. Diddy TikToks, man, talking about his arrest. If you made it this far, drop real one for real in the comments. You should be caught up with everything. I learned so much from this video. Y'all gotta let me know, guilty or not guilty. This is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a lot of people that's gonna get called to the carpet. It's gonna be a lot of things that's gonna be said. It's gonna be a lot of things that's gonna be exposed and it's gonna be crazy. 50 million. I'm just here. I'm just here to see what happens, man. If you went into this stuff, I got a TikTok playlist you can go through and binge watch it. This is gonna get very interesting. Until next time, self-love and positivity, Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Whew.